Hi, so welcome to the second lecture on engineering mathematics 1 and today we will discuss mean value theorems. So, let us go through the concepts covered. So, we will uh, discuss the Lagrange mean value theorem, a very important concept which is the uh, extension of the previous lecture where we have studied uh, Rho's theorem. And there is another generalized uh, mean value theorem or the Cauchy mean value theorem which will be also discussed in today's lecture. So, let me just recall from the previous lecture. So, if a function f is continuous in a closed interval a b and differentiable in open interval a b and the function value at the point a and the point b. So, the end points of the interval is equal then there exists a number c in the open interval a b such that the derivative vanishes at this point. The geometrical interpretation is, is clear from this figure. So, we have a function f which is continuous and differentiable and the function value at a and b both are equal. Then there exists a point c here where the tangent is parallel to the x axis. So, now coming to the Lagrange mean value theorem, we have the function f which is continuous similar to the previous conditions of the Rose theorem and differentiable in the open interval a b. The third condition where the function was equal at the two end points is not required here. So, it is more general more less restrictive and in that case again there exists at least one number c in the open interval a b such that this quotient here f b minus f a over b minus a is equal to the derivative at a point c. So, let us first discuss the geometrical interpretation of this Lagrange mean value theorem. So, if we have a function which is continuous and differentiable in some interval a b and then let us take a look what is this quotient here. So, if we join these two points f at a and f at b then we get this line segment. So, what is the slope of this line segment? Let us compute. So, in this case if I draw this triangle here the height here will be f b because the distance from here to this point is f b and the distance from this point to this point here is f a. So, f b minus f a is this height of this triangle and the base here is b minus a because up to this point is b and up to this point here the coordinate of this point is a f a. So, here this distance is b minus a and this one is f b minus f a and so this quotient here f b minus f a over b minus a this perpendicular divided by this base will be the tangent of this angle. So, basically this expression here f b minus f a over b minus a is the uh, slope of this line segment which we have drawn by uh, meeting these two end points of the uh, curve. And now what this theorem says that this will be equal to f prime c. So, the slope at some point in the domain a to b. So, the geometrical meaning is that there will be at least one tangent in this particular case we can see these three tangents which are parallel to this line segment. So, this Lagrange mean value theorem says that there will be at least one point where the tangent will be parallel to this line segment joining the these two points the end points of the curve. So, as I have written here in other words there is at least one tangent in this interval that is parallel to the line segment that goes through the end points of the curve. The proof is very simple if we consider this function phi uh, x is equal to f x minus f b minus f a over b minus a and x. So, if you take a close look at this function it is a basically difference of two functions f x and minus some constant times x. So, if f is continuous in the closed interval a b and differentiable in the open interval a b and x is also a function which is uh, continuous and differentiable in those intervals. 
then this difference will be also continuous in closed interval a b and differentiable in the open interval a b. So, for the setting of this uh, function is done because if you compute here for example, the phi at the point a and phi at the point b then we will realize that these two values are also equal. So, phi at a is nothing but f a minus the f b minus f a and divided by this b minus a and at point a so here would be a. So, this if I simplify then this will become b uh, f a minus a f a and then minus a f b and minus a f a and divided by this b minus a. So, this a f a will get cancelled and then we will get b f a minus a f b over b minus a. And now, if I compute here f b, so here you have then f b minus this quotient f b minus f a and divided by this b minus a and then here b. So, if I simplify now this, so f b f b minus a f b minus b f b and plus b f a divided by this b minus a. So, in this case this b f b gets cancelled and we get b f a minus a f b over b minus a. In the earlier case also we got b uh, f a minus a f b over b minus a. So, the function is taking same value at a and b and if we recall again the condition was for, for, for Rho's theorem other than the continuity and differentiability that the function should be having the same value at the two end points. So, in this case this function f satisfies all the conditions of the Rho's theorem and therefore, we can apply the Rho's theorem to this function phi x. So, what will now give us if we take the derivative here the phi prime x is equal to the derivative of x minus this is a constant. So, here f b minus f a and divided by this b minus a and the derivative of x will be 1 and the Rho's theorem says that the phi there will be a point where the function will be the derivative of the function will be 0. So, in this case now if we apply the Rho's theorem then phi prime c will be 0 and for some c in the interval in the open interval a b and which implies precisely that this is 0 and that is the Lagrange mean value theorem that f prime c will be equal to f b minus f a over b minus a is equal to 0. So, the construction of this function here was important to prove the Lagrange mean value theorem and this phi here satisfy all the properties of the Rho's theorem and we can apply the Rho's theorem to this function and we got the desired result of the Lagrange mean value theorem. So, there is another one the generalized mean value theorem which is also called the Cauchy mean value theorem. So, here we will consider two functions instead of one. So, if f x and g x are two functions continuous in closed interval a b and differentiable in open interval a b and there is another condition on g that g prime the derivative of g does not vanish anywhere inside the interval then there exists a point c in the open interval a b such that this quotient here f b minus f a over f g b minus g a is equal to the uh, ratio of the derivative of this f and g at the point c. So, the proof is again pretty similar to the earlier proof of the Lagrange mean value theorem and in this case we set this function or define a function in such a way that this phi x is equal to f x minus f a minus this quotient here which will be coming in the result of this Cauchy mean value theorem and multiplied by g x minus g a. So, again the similar argument since f and g they are continuous in closed interval and differentiable in the open interval a b. 
So, the phi is also differentiable and continuous in the given intervals. Moreover, if we see here that what is the phi at A that is f a minus f a here this is 0 and g a minus g a is also 0. So, everything is 0. So, the phi a is 0 and the phi b which is f b minus f a and g b minus g a. So, this g b minus g a will get cancelled with this g b minus g a and then we will get f b minus f a minus this f b minus f a which is again 0. So, in this case the phi a is 0 and phi b is 0 and phi satisfies all the, uh, the uh, all the conditions of the Rose theorem and therefore, we can apply Rose theorem to this function phi x. So, applying the Rose theorem, but before that there is a point here that we have to tell that this phi is well defined because this g b minus g a should not go to 0 that means, g b should not be equal to g a. The question is why g b cannot be equal to g a. We have not made such a restriction directly in the assumptions of this Cauchy mean value theorem, but again there was an additional condition that g prime x does not vanish anywhere inside the interval. So, if this g b is equal to g a in this case we can again apply the, uh, uh, the Rose theorem to the function g which will say that there will be a point c in the open interval a b where the derivative will vanish, but as per the assumption of the theorem g prime does not vanish anywhere inside the interval. So, this cannot be equal. So, there will be never such a situation that this g b will become uh, equal to g a and, and, and this will become infinity. So, the function is well defined, the function is differentiable, it is continuous and g b uh, phi a is equal to phi b. So, all the conditions of the Rose theorem are satisfied for this function phi x. So, if we apply the Rose theorem now to the function, then uh, we will get exactly the result which is given here, because uh, the the phi prime x will be the the derivative of f, and then uh, this is a constant here minus again this expression and the derivative of g. So what will be this again? So let me just uh, come to this point. So phi prime x will be the f prime x minus this zero minus this quotient here f b minus this f a over g b minus this g a and then this g prime x. And the Rose theorem says that at the point x is equal to c this is equal to 0. So, what do we get then the phi prime c and divided by this g prime c is equal to the f b minus f a over this g b and minus g a. So, that is the uh, Cauchy mean value theorem or the generalized mean value theorem. So, if we uh, now we discuss the geometrical meaning or the of this uh, Cauchy mean value theorem. So, here now we consider this parametric curve which is given by x is equal to g t g is the function the given function there, but I have introduced this parameter t which is commonly used for the parametric curves and the y is equal to the other function f t and t uh, varies from a to b in this closed interval. So, this parametric curve you can trace by uh, varying the values of t. So, if for example, t is equal to a then we have here the x coordinate g a and the y coordinate. Uh, f a of this point. So, this point is g a f a and then if we vary the t we will basically move on this curve we will trace this curve until we reach the end point here t is equal to b which is uh, given by g b f b. So, now the geometrical meaning is uh, similar to uh, the earlier result on Lagrange mean value theorem. So, there will if we uh, join these two points 
by this line segment, then this theorem says. So, first of all this uh, the uh, slope of this line segment will be given by this f b minus f a over g b minus g a, uh, because of the same argument as we have discussed earlier. The height will be uh, f b minus f a and this the base of this triangle will be g b minus g a. So, this is the slope of this line segment and then the right hand side here says that there will be at least one point on this curve where the tangent uh, will be parallel to this quotient line. So, if you take a close look this f prime c over g prime c is nothing but the, uh, the, the slope of the tangent line at some point c, because the slope will be calculated as at some point here the d y over d x is equal to for the parametric curve. So, this will be d y over d t and divided by d x over d t or the y prime t divided by the x prime t and this y is, is basically the f. So, here you have the f prime t over g prime t and this theorem says that there will be a point somewhere in the interval. So, t is equal to c. So, we will get uh, this slope here of this tangent line as f prime uh, at c divided by g prime c. And now, let me just uh, quickly summarize at this point what we have learned today. So, we uh, discussed the generalized mean value theorem which was this f b minus f a over g b minus uh, g a is equal to f prime uh, c over g prime c. And now, what will happen if g x is equal to x? So, g x is equal to x meaning that here you have this uh, g b will be just equal to b and this g a will be equal to a and g prime x here will be just 1. So, what do we get in this case? the Lagrange mean value theorem, because that uh, conclusion will be f b minus f a over b minus a is equal to f prime c. So, in this particular case, when we take g x is equal to x, we will get the Lagrange mean value theorem. And what will happen to this Lagrange mean value theorem, if we put f b is equal to f a, the additional condition what we have for the Rose theorem. So, f b minus f a, this quantity here will become 0 and then we will get f prime c is equal to 0. So, this is the generalized mean value theorem and as a particular case if we take the function g x is equal to x, we will get the Lagrange mean value theorem and again if we add another condition that f b is equal to f a, we will get the Rose mean value theorem which is f prime c is equal to 0. Now, we go to the we will go to this uh, some examples. The first one that using mean value theorem, we will show that this inequality cos uh, e x minus uh, cos e power y is less than equal to x minus y for x y less than or equal to 0. So, first we note that when both are equal x y are equal, then naturally this cos e power x minus cos e power so 0 and is equal to 0. So, then inequality is naturally satisfied when x and y both are same. So, we will consider the case when they are not same. And now, we consider the f t another function cos e power t, because clearly we can see that we want to prove this cos e power x minus cos e power y using mean value theorem. So, if we consider this function f t is equal to cos e power t in this interval x y and naturally we have assumed that x is not equal to y and now we apply the mean value theorem to this result what we will get cos e power x minus cos e power y x minus y is equal to there will be some point in this interval open interval x y and the value of this quotient will be is equal to f prime c. So, this is the Lagrange mean value theorem and now we will estimate uh, this derivative, because the derivative we can compute the f t is cos e power t. 
So, taking the absolute value both the sides we get this cos e power x minus cos e power y and this absolute value will take to the right hand side. So, the x minus y absolute value and the absolute value of this f prime. So, f prime is nothing but the sin minus uh, sin e power t into e power t. So, because of the absolute value we have not uh, taken this minus sign into consideration. So, we have e power c sin e power c because this fun the derivative has to be evaluated at point uh, at point c. Okay, now, this uh, implies so if I we take the maximum value of this expression here. So, the c varies from x to y. So, we have taken the c from this x to y and we will take the maximum value of this one and note that the c belongs to this x y open interval. So, it is basically a negative number the c is less than 0 because x and y both are less than equal to 0 and therefore, the c will be strictly less than 0 in the open interval. So, the sign is always bounded by 1. So, we have less than equal to 1 this sign function and the e power c the exponential function for this negative argument c will be always less than 1 because e power 0 is 1 and all for all uh, negative values it takes value less than 1 for positive values it will take more than 1. So, this is strictly less than 1 this is less than equal to 1. So, this expression here or the maximum value of this derivative is bounded by strictly bounded by 1. So, we got this inequality cos e power x minus cos e power uh, y is less than the absolute value of x minus y which we want to prove uh, in this result. The second uh, example we will consider that this f is the differentiable function on the closed interval minus 2 to 2 and such that the value is given as minus 2 is equal to 1 f is given as 2 uh, as 5 and there is another information here that f prime x f prime x is bounded by 1 for all values of x in this interval minus 2 to 2. And using mean value theorem we want to find the value of uh, the function at 0. So, if we take a look at this uh, problem and we want to find the value of f 0. So, we need to apply the mean value theorem or Lagrange mean value theorem in the interval minus 2 to 0 and 2 to 0 and then we will get some estimate on this f 0. So, if we apply the Lagrange mean value theorem on minus 2 to 0 interval what we get the f 0 minus f minus 2 divided by 0 minus minus 2 is equal to there will exist some c 1 in the open interval minus 2 to 0. So, that this value will be equal to the derivative at that point c 1. Now, this derivative here f prime c 1 is bounded by 1. So, we know the estimate of this f prime c 1 this is always between minus 1 and 1. So, what is this expression here the f minus 2 is 1. So, f 0 minus 1 and divided by 2 f 0 minus 1 divided by 2 lies between minus 1 and 1 because this is equal to the derivative and the derivative uh, is bounded by less than equal to 1 the absolute value. So, this expression here lies between minus 1 and 1. Now, if we multiply this 2 to both the sides or the uh, we can multiply 2 to this inequality here we will get minus 2 less than equal to f 0 minus 1 less than equal to 2 and then we can add this 1 to the inequality. So, we will get here the 3 less than equal to f 0 and less than equal to. Uh, so, here minus 2 was there plus 1. So, minus 1 and then here 2 and then plus 1 we will get 3. So, out of this inequality we will get that f 0 lies between minus 1 and 3. Again if we use the Lagrange mean value theorem in the interval 0 to 2 in the interval 0 to 2 we will get f 2 minus this f 0 over 2 minus 0 is equal to the first derivative at some point uh, c 2. So, again here the f 2 is known the f 2 is 5. So, 5 minus f 0 over 2. So, what do we have here? We have f 2 f 2 is given as 5 and minus this f 0 
divided by 2 and this value again is bounded by uh, minus 1 and 1. So, we got this one here minus 2 and less than equal to uh, 5 minus this f 0 and minus 2. So, this uh, implies that this minus 7 minus f 0 and this will be uh, minus 3. So, if you multiply by minus 1 here, so the inequality will change. So, 7 less than f 0 and then less than 3. So, this inequality we will get now that f 0 is greater than equal to 3 and less than equal to 7 this one which says that the f 0 is greater than uh, or equal to 3, but less than equal to 7 the earlier inequality says that f 0 is less than or equal to 3. So, by these two inequalities here f 0 is less than equal to 3 and f 0 is greater than equal to 3 what we will uh, conclude that f 0 has to be 3. So, f 0 has to be 3. So, we got the value using the mean value theorem of the function at 0 given that those derivatives and the end points value was given. The last example here the function f which satisfies now uh, that the derivative is 1 over 5 minus x square and f 0 is 2. Now, we want to use the uh, Lagrange mean value theorem to estimate the bounds on f 1. So, in this case the exact value of f 1 is not possible. So, we will estimate the lower and the upper bound for f 1. So, again if we use the Lagrange mean value theorem in the interval 0 to 1 because we want to estimate 1. So, 0 to 1 then we will get f 1 minus f 0 divided by this difference 1 and there will be some point whose value will be equal to the derivative at that point. So, out of this inequality f 1 minus this f 0 is 2 is equal to f prime c. Now, what is the derivative? Derivative is 1 over 5 minus x square. So, f prime c is 1 over 5 minus c square. Now, just note that the c here is between 0 and 1. So, the lower bound of this 1 over 5 minus c square will be obtained when we uh, then this c, this c approaches to 0. That means, this value is always greater than 1 over 5 and when the c approaches to this maximum value in the interval as 1 in that case this will become 4 and the maximum value of this 1 over 5 minus c square will be 1 by 4. So, now we know that the derivative lies between 1 by 5 and 1 by 4. So, what is the derivative f prime c is here f 1 minus 2. So, with this we, we got the inequality that f 1 minus 2 lies between 1 by 5 and 1 by 4 and this implies so 2 we can take to the other side and also it has to be added to the right side here. So, this we will get 11 by 5 less than f 1 and then if we add 2 here this will be 9 by 4. So, we got the estimate on f 1 that uh, it lies between 11 by 5 and 9 by 4. So, these are the references we, we used here the Puskono uh, differential and integral calculus and crazy advanced engineering mathematics. So, the conclusion for today's lecture that we have learned the generalized mean value theorem and as a special case when we substitute this g x the other function the second function as x we will get the Lagrange mean value theorem and if we take another assumption that f a is equal to f v then this uh, will be the Rose theorem which says that f prime c is equal to 0. Okay, thank you for today's lecture.